See, I told you we had more examples. All right, so let's look at this. Let's see if we can figure out whether or not this is a function. Let's see, does it pass the vertical line test? You slide your vertical line, and it looks like everything's fine. It looks like it's kind of weird right here, but you need to understand that we are dealing with some limitations in terms of what the computer is going to display and how things print. Uh, but this is going to pass the vertical line test. This guy never curves back onto itself. Um, looks like he's trying to, but we stop him just before he gets a chance. So this is a function. And what about the domain? As I go from left to right, what am I using? Well, he goes all the way left, and he keeps going, going and going to the right until he gets to this x value of 4. So the domain is from negative infinity to positive 4. You see how this is a closed point? So we're going to get a bracket on that. And what about my range? Well, the range is from bottom to top. So this guy's going down. So it's coming from negative infinity. And he gets going higher, higher, and higher. But he stops at a value of 5. The y values do not go beyond positive 5. So it's from negative infinity to 5 with a bracket. All right, let's try this next one. A uh, classic cubing function. Oh, I gave it away. I said function. So let's see. Is it really a function? Does this pass the vertical line test? As I slide across here, yes, everything seems to be A-OK. -okay. Right? You never see it curved back onto itself. You never see it stacked. So this guy, yes, is a function. What about my domain? Well, there are certain assumptions that we have to make here. This guy is going further and further out here. He's not going to stop right here. He is still going to keep going down and out, but he's going to be really, really steep. But you know what? In math, we have all the time in the world, right? So this guy is going to get steeper as he goes down, but he is still going out to the left. So he's coming from negative infinity. No breaks, no gaps. He's going to keep on going. And as he goes up to the right, he's going to keep expanding out in both the left and the right uh, sides here. So the domain is going to be all real numbers. The range is a little bit easier to see because the range, you see him going all the way down. He may have a hiccup here, but he ends up going all the way up. So he's from negative infinity to infinity. There are no breaks, there are no gaps as you go from bottom to top for this. All right. We've got two more to look at. Starting with this guy. So I hope you guys can see pretty quickly that this fails the vertical line test. Everything is fine until I get here. And then you draw a vertical line, it's going to go through uh, two points. So not a function. What about your domain? Well, this guy is broken up into two pieces, but you're just going to do the union of whatever you have. My domain for this guy right here is from 1 to infinity as it goes out there. But this one right here also starts at 1, and he also goes all the way out to the right. Now, don't get thrown off and say, oh, but he goes down. Domain does not go down. Domain goes left to right. So he goes left from 1 to infinity. Right? Both of these guys do. And so it's just bracket 1 to infinity. What, what about your range? Range is bottom to top. So starting here, this guy's going down. So he's coming down. He gets as high up as negative 1 before he has to stop, right? But there's a gap, right? So he jumps back up to be here at 6. And he goes to infinity. Right? So let's describe this range. Let's describe what we've highlighted on that y-axis. This guy's coming from negative infinity. He goes all the way up to negative 1, but then he has to stop. So it's union. You jump to 6 with a bracket, and he goes to infinity. So the domain didn't need a union because they were both from 1 to infinity. 
but the range as you go bottom to top there's a jump right here and so that's where that union sign has to come in let's see if that looks like on the next example so here is an example of something we will be seeing later called a piecewise defined I'll give it away function right uh, it's pretty clear that this guy passes the vertical line test as you slide along everything's fine there's nothing right here but then it's still fine as you keep going out to the right so this is a function. Now let's try to describe the domain. Well, you got two pieces, just like we had above. So this guy's coming from the left, so from negative infinity. Now notice this is an open circle, and that's deliberate. That means that you don't get to include that stopping point that happens when x equals negative 2. And then there's a jump. And you come back here at this value. Now don't look at the negative 5. Look at the x value. The x value is here at 0, and he goes all the way to the right. So I hope that you can see that the purpose of me shading and coloring the pieces of the x and the y axes, so that when it comes to the interval notation for domain and range, it's really easy. You just focus here. I see that I'm coming from negative infinity to negative 2 parentheses. There's a jump. There's a small gap. That's a gap nonetheless, so that's union. You pick back up at an x value of 0, and you go all the way to the right toward infinity. Now what about your range? This one might be a little bit trickier. If I look at this piece right here, he's kind of starting here at 2, y equals 2, and he's going all the way down. But this piece right here starts at negative 5, and he goes all the way up. And so it's our job now to describe what part of the y-axis have we shaded as a demonstration of what our range is. When you look at this, we colored everything. So my range is all real numbers. And you might say, but this guy was open. He was, but notice you have this point right here who would kind of fill in the gap right there for that. So these guys end up overlapping each other, going in opposite directions, so it ends up coloring everything. So there, there you go. That's domain and range. This is how we talk about determining whether or not we have a function. So uh, you're going to see stuff like this on your test, maybe a quiz. So make sure you practice, make sure that you know how to put things in interval notation, and make sure that you answer those questions well. Pay attention to your signs, pay attention to directions, and you're going to be great.